Would you stand with me this morning for a moment? If you would bow with me in a word of prayer, Father, I thank you again. I thank you for the privilege we have of getting together and worshiping and being in your presence, talking about you, spending time in prayer, and just an incredible freedom that we have. We don't take it for granted anymore. We want to say thank you this morning for preparing every one of our hearts for what you are doing and wanting to do this morning. And we want to tell you again that we are open, we are ready to receive, we are willing to be changed. We declare that we are soft clay in your hands for you to have your way. And I declare again, Father, what has been spoken a number of times this morning already. I thank you from the beginning of the service to the end. I thank you that you are moving, you are touching, you are speaking. We are believing that we're leaving here different than the way we came. And I declare today, somebody will leave here free of depression. I declare here today, somebody will leave here with restored relationship. I declare here today that somebody will leave here physically healthier than they walked in the door. And I declare here today, somebody is going to leave here financially better than they came in. And I declare today that somebody's ministry is moving forward. As we walk out this door, greater effectiveness in our ministry. Holy Spirit, you are working. Before we begin here, Father, I'm asking for a fresh anointing. I'm asking that you would take literal possession. I don't want to say a single thing unless I hear it from you. And I don't want to do a single thing unless I see you do it first. And so just open up and allow me to get it with clarity. With the authority you've given in the name of Jesus, I bind up every demonic bird that would seek to snatch and pervert the seed that is going to be sown today. And I declare it will be uninterrupted. I release an anointing of understanding, not knowledge, understanding. It will go into the heart and be received by faith. And I thank you again, Father, you are speaking powerfully in this place. I declare that your voice will be heard by your sheep. They will know it's you. They will believe it, receive it, and they'll be obedient to it. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody in agreement said, Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> this morning, I need to <clears throat> plant a picture very visibly in your mind. And when the Lord laid this in my heart, I was quite excited about it. But I need to make it incredibly visible so that you can see this and for the Holy Spirit to bring it back over and over in your life. James, if I could have you shoot that on the screen. If you get nothing else today, I want to encourage you to grab your bulletin. If you would take your pen or your notepad, and I just want to encourage you to write these down. There's going to be a few, few more other things that I have you write a little later. But if you could write these four words down that literally, literally are the difference between life and death, literally are the difference between health and sickness, the four words, would you write them down? God's word is medicine. Would you say that with me? God's word is medicine. Say that one more time. God's word is medicine. I want to ask you very bluntly, and I, God and I were talking about this when I was preparing for today. And the Lord literally said to me, he goes, call. He says, when you begin to experience a symptom in your body, and we all do. We're in a fallen world. We get hit by symptoms. The enemy wants to attack and steal and trespass on you and I. That's reality. But the Lord said, call, when you get hit with a symptom, without even thinking, what is the first thing that comes to your mind and that you begin to turn to? I don't want you to raise your hand. But I had to say to the Lord, when I get hit sometimes, my first thought is, well, I... Maybe better go grab the Tylenol. My first thought. 
The first thought is to move in the direction of the pill, the medicine, the cold tablet. And I said, God, that's, that's reality. I said, I would rather it not be the first thought, but that is often. And then the Holy Spirit comes and goes, no call. I want you to turn to the real medicine that my children have, and that is the word. I got to tell you what the Lord did me years ago, and I've told you before. Um, how many of you know what a posture headache is? How many of you know? Posture, a posture headache. Okay. I um, was six foot four when I was born. <clears throat> it was in me. When I was born, I had the seat of six foot four. I grew to be six foot four, taller than my dad, taller than my brother, taller than my sister, taller than my mother. But the tendency when you are tall, and some of you know this, that when you sit in a chair, you have a tendency to slouch. Or you sit on a couch and you slouch. Well, I began doing that years ago. And as I would slouch and as I would be there for a period of time, all of a sudden my posture began and I could begin to feel it. And pretty soon I just had pounding, just pounding headache at the back of my head. And I knew it was a posture headache. Well, when that happened, my first thought was, well, just go to the Go to the cupboard and open it up. How many of you have a medicine cabinet? How many of you have one where all your medicine is stored? You know, where do the rest of you have it? Those of you who didn't raise your hand. Huh? Close by. It's not a cabinet. It's close by. But I remember I would take, I would go and pop two Tylenol. In 15 minutes, my headache would be gone. I would carry on. I could keep on slouching. Didn't make a difference. I will never forget. I was at a conference with Jane in Jasper. In the middle of the night, I woke up, had a crazy posture headache, and I went to go get the Tylenol, and the Lord stopped me, and he said this to me, call, he goes, which is stronger, Tylenol or me? I was in crisis. I had trusted Tylenol for so long in my life, I didn't even think about it. When it happened, I just went and I pulled the bottle. Do you know why? Because I believed in Tylenol. That night, in the middle of the night, I had a wrestle with God, and I had to confess. I had to say, God, I want to believe that you are stronger than Tylenol. And he said, okay. He said, then take me like a pill. And I began to confess the name of Jesus. I began to take the word of God inside of me. And it was a battle because Tylenol was screaming at me. Every one of you knows exactly what I'm talking about. It's not addiction, but it's a spiritual draw. And we battled. I wish I could tell you it was done in 10 minutes. It wasn't. It was done in about two hours. I had to resist this sucker and put it down, and I kept receiving and pretty soon, that headache lifted. And ever since Jasper, probably 15, maybe 18 years ago, when anything like that happens, my first thought is Tylenol. My second instant thought is, which is stronger? Tylenol has not been a part of my life for about 18 years. Because I had to learn, I had to learn that the Word and Jesus is stronger medicine than my Tylenol. I'm going to say some things today, and I just want this to be really clear. I'm going to say some things that are going to agitate the flesh part of you. For those of you who are, and I'm not going to use the word addicted, but those of you who are dependent upon drugs, dependent upon pain drugs, dependent upon there is going to be some spiritual warfare that goes on here today, but the reality is the word of God spoken in love has the ability to override that and bring faith even when we have a pharmaceutical dependency. I want to say to you, so that you can get it inside of you, God's word 
is medicine. And I want to prophetically declare that you and I will get to the place when we are hit with a symptom or battling with something that the first thought will be, I'm going to go to the word and stand on it and believe it and receive my healing with the word instead of moving in this direction. And I'll tell you straight up, it's warfare. Some of you are bugged already. But I need to release what God has laid upon my heart. I want to read, and I'm going to read a few of them. How many of you know the name Kenneth Hagin? How many of you know the name? Most all of us know it. If you don't know it, I encourage you to get it. A few years ago, we handed out what I believe still is probably the most powerful devotional book on healing that I have ever had in my life that I've ever read. I want to read just a few excerpts from from this because some of it is his story that he interweaves between the whole thing. Some of us know the story, some of us don't. But I want to read the very first, January 1, and then I'm going to read a six or seven, parts of six or seven, and I want you to hear this. Just allow the Spirit to speak to you. According to New Strong's exhaustive concordance of the Bible, the Hebrew word in verse 22 of Proverbs 4, translated health, actually means medicine. Let me read the verse to you. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those who find them, and health or medicine to all their flesh. Notice that this passage of Scripture begins, My son, attend to my words. What does it mean to attend to my words? It means to put God's words first. Then we are told to incline our ears unto his words and to listen to them. Finally, we are told to keep his words in the midst of our heart. So there are three things we are told to do with the word of God. Number one, attend to it or put it first. Number two, listen to it. And number three, keep it in the midst of our heart. Why are we told to do this? Verse 22 says, for God's words are life unto those who find them and medicine to all their flesh. I believe that. God's words are medicine. Does God have medicine? Yes. What is it? It's his word. His word is medicine to all your flesh. That means it is good for stomach trouble, blood disease, for all your flesh, liver, kidney, heart, prostate, breast, eyes, ears, nose, mouth, and so forth. That's how he begins the book. Let me tell you a little of his story. And I want to declare this. Faith comes by what? April 28th. When I was a teenager, the doctor said I wouldn't live. But I proved them wrong. I had two serious organic heart troubles and an incurable blood disease. I was also paralyzed. And the doctor said that my white corpuscles were eating up my red corpuscles faster than I could build, build them up and faster than anything they could be done about it medically. They said, we'll be honest with you. If you didn't have a heart condition, if you didn't have paralysis, the incurable blood disease alone would prove fatal to you. But it didn't prove fatal to me. In 68 years, I have not had a single headache. I've proved God's word works. The last headache I had was in August 1933. I'm not bragging on, them, on me. I'm bragging on what I learned from the Bible. Someone might say, what would you do if you had a headache? Well, first, I wouldn't tell it if I did. And second, I'd resist it. Some years ago, I was leaving the parking lot at Rama, and all of a sudden, a pain hit me in my head. My head started hurting. I spoke and I said, oh no, you don't, devil. You don't put any headache on me. I don't have one. I'm not going to have one. 
And by the time I was heading down the road, it was all gone. You see, we make the mistake of ever accepting these things. March 8. More than 68 years ago, when I was on the bed of sickness, I began to get a little glimpse of light from the Word of God concerning healing. And so I began to talk to other Christians about it. They would tell me, well, yes, God did heal under the Old Covenant, but that was just for the Jews. That's not for us nowadays. Now, many might have responded by thinking, well, I guess that's a closed subject for them. Subject then. They're Christian and they ought to know what they're talking about. But you see, I was no longer religious. I wasn't just a church person anymore. I had become a Christian. There's a difference between a church person and a Christian. Unfortunately, many church people have been religiously brainwashed. They've never really been taught the Bible. So many times they just accept what they're told about the Bible. Now, when these religious people would tell me that healing is no longer for us today, my head, my intellect, it would want to accept that because my head had been educated that way. My head had heard preachers and others say, yes, the Lord Jesus healed when he was here on earth and the apostles healed, all right. But the Lord did that just to get the church established. When the last apostle died, all that ceased. I had heard that worn out, washed out theory over and over. But my heart said, that's not right. When I say heart, I'm not talking about the physical organ that pumps blood. The heart of a man is his spirit. The Bible also calls it the hidden man of the heart or man's innermost being. Something on the inside of me told me that I could be healed. I don't mean it was a voice. It was an inward intuition, an inward witness. Way down on the inside of me, I knew that what those religious people were saying was wrong. March 11. An inward intuition, that inward witness on the inside of me told me that the answer was in the book, in the Bible. And that was the difference between life and death for me. Most folks would have given up and died at 15 years of age. But I got into the book. I slept with it in my arms. Can I just ask you a question? How many of you have slept with the word of God in your arms, battling so greatly? How many of you have done that? I've done it. I slept with it in my arms. I hugged it into my bosom. I hung on to it in the night. Praise God for the book, for the word of God. I found out that God not only dealt with sickness in the Old Testament, but he also dealt with sickness in the New Testament under the New Covenant. Now, I had read James 5, 14 and 15 in the New Testament many times before, but one day it dawned on me that James asked the question, is there any sick among you? The fact that James asked that question infers there shouldn't be any sick people in the church. In other words, James was saying that healing belongs to to the church. December 27. The doctor said I was dying. I lived and relived my death over and over in my mind. In my mind's eye, I saw the doctors turn my body over to the undertaker to prepare it for burial. I saw them take the casket and go to the church. I saw them roll the casket down the aisle and set it before the pulpit. I heard the people singing the last song and praying the last prayer. I saw them close the lid and roll the casket down the aisle. 
I saw the pallbearers put it into the hearse. I saw the funeral procession. I saw all of this many times in my head. I watched as a graveside prayer was said. I saw everyone leave. I saw them put the casket in the ground. I saw the flowers on the fresh mound of dirt. I saw the flowers wither and die. I saw the hot sun of summer beat down on the grave. I saw myself dead. But I got hold of Proverbs 4, 21. And I began to see myself alive. I asked myself, what would I do if I were up? I said, I'd preach. That's what I would do. And so I began to make sermon notes and get ready to preach. Can I ask you, when did he do that? Before or after he was healed? Before. December 6. While I was on the bed of sickness as a 16-year-old boy, I struggled with the subject of miracles. And every time I would have a good scripture about healing, the devil would come to my mind and say, healing is not for us today. And sometimes he would say, now that's not for the church. That's just for the Jews. Well, I'd listen to those words and put the light out. What little light I had on the subject of healing would be gone. I didn't know how to follow my spirit. I didn't know that I could follow my spirit. I now know that it was my spirit that knew about healing and miracles because my spirit received the life and the nature of God in it when I was born again. And my spirit was picking up things from God and trying to pass them onto my mind. My spirit told me that there was help for me. I had been bedfast for six months. As I was reading one day from the Gospel of Mark, I read about the woman with the issue of blood. I heard those words on the inside of me, in my spirit. Did you notice that the woman's faith made her whole? I said out loud, no, I didn't notice. And then I heard on the inside of me. Did you ever hear anyone say that faith has been done away with? You see, her faith made her whole. After thinking a little bit, I said, no, I've never heard a preacher say that. Then I heard that invert voice say, no, and you never will. For a faith has been done away with, then there are no Christians and there's no church. Ephesians 2.8 says, for by grace, you have been saved through faith. Finally, I heard these words. If faith hasn't been done away with and her faith made her whole, then your faith can make you whole. From that moment on, no one could talk me out of the fact that healing is for us today. April 28. When I was a teenager, oh no, I want to read, Mar I want to read May 12. When I was 16 years old and on the bed of sickness, I said to the Lord, Lord, if your word is so, I'm coming off this bed. If I don't come off this bed, it will be because you lied. And if the Bible is no good, I might as well throw it in the trash can and burn it up. You need to settle on the integrity of the word and then go after it tooth and nail. Let me say it again. You need to settle on the integrity of the word and then go after it tooth and nail. Do not be deterred. Don't let anything stop you. 
If the Bible said it, then believe it. That settles it. October 25. After I was healed as a teenage boy, the thought never entered into my mind that I might die prematurely. Now, since then, I almost died a time or two because I got into dis disobedience. But I got back into that secret place of the Most High just as fast as I could. I taught my children that if they honored their father and mother, they would experience well days on the earth and live a long time. When they were little, I read the Bible to them. Neither one of our children ever had to go to the hospital. Pat went there to have her babies, but that was it. Very seldom was either one of our children even sick in any way. When Ken Jr. was 12 years of age, my mother-in-law called me and Aretha, while we were on the road holding a meeting, he had the mumps. Ken Jr. said, Daddy, I told Grandma to call and have you pray. There's no use in me missing school. God will heal me. So I prayed. And within 45 minutes, the mumps disappeared. And he went back to school the next day. Now, i got to stop here. How many boys would pray to go back to school? I, I'm just struggling with that part. In 45 minutes, the mumps disappeared. And he went back to school the next day. He never did miss a day of school. God's word works. How many of you know the name Charles Capps? Just raise your hand, would you? How many of you don't know who Charles Capps is? I encourage you, apart from this book by Kenneth Hagin, this man-sized book by Charles Capps has probably been the most profound influence of healing in our family's life. It is called God creative, God's Creative Power for Healing. How many of you have this in your home? If you don't have it, we'll make sure that we get some to you. I want you to read and hear a few things from a farmer with farmer-like faith who God used and raised up in probably the most simplistic language that anybody could ever speak and literally has touched hundreds of millions of people around the world, not just in the area of healing, but today in the area of healing. I want you to hear this. God's word is spoken of in Proverbs 4.22 as being medicine to all of our flesh. It is the most powerful medicine available today. Let me say it again. It is the most powerful medicine available today. Some of you need to write that down. And it is capable of healing your body without side effects. Psalm 107.20 tells us that God sent his word and healed. According to Isaiah 53, 5 and 6 and 1 Peter 2, 24, healing is a fact as far as God is concerned. It belongs to us because healing was in the atonement. Our confession of the word of God calls for healing, which is already ours, but it's not in manifestation in our bodies. Listen to this. No, I am not teaching against doctors or medicine. But don't depend on doctors or medicine alone to keep you healthy. There are some diseases that medical science cannot cure. But if you need a doctor, see a doctor. Many lives are saved every year through medical help. There are medicines today that are beneficial in aiding the body's healing process. Listen to this. If you are taking medicine... Mix faith with it by saying, I believe I receive my healing in Jesus' name. Man's medicine will not heal you and generally will not keep you from being healed. Yet there are some medicines today 
that have so many side effects, they seem to be worse than the disease. So ask some questions and find out what you're taking. Most medicine will help hold down the symptoms while you are applying God's principles concerning healing and health. I do not advocate that you throw your medicine away. Did you hear that? I do not advocate that you throw your medicine away and rely on confession alone unless the Lord directs you to do so. It takes time to renew your mind and develop your faith in your words as well as God's word. But the things you are continually confessing eventually become a part of you. It is true. God has provided healing for us through his word. But we must learn to appropriate that healing by making the word part of our daily vocabulary. I believe by being taught properly and by practicing your faith, you can grow to the point where it will be a common thing for you to receive healing through the word of God. But it doesn't happen overnight. It takes time to develop your faith. So if you have a life or death situation where the doctors say, if you don't have an operation, immediately you will die. In other words, the disease has a head start on your faith. My advice would be to have the operation and believe God for a quick recovery. Use some common sense and don't do foolish things through spiritual pride and call it faith. It takes time to develop faith and to operate in these principles, so don't let anyone put you under condemnation for going to doctors or having an operation. In other words, Operate on your level of faith, but don't stay there. Continue in God's word until you develop faith in the healing power of God's word. I want to flip over just to the first line of this chapter four. Listen, God's medicine. I laughed so hard when I read this the first time. To be spoken by mouth three times a day until faith comes. Then once a day to maintain faith. If circumstances grow worse, double the dosage. There are no harmful side effects. Isn't that great? I want to do something with you this morning. And then I want you to help me for a little bit before we go into a time of healing. There are some of you that already have this in place, and I, I bless you because you're using it. God has taught you these things over the years. Some of us, we've never heard this stuff before. How many of you have what you would call a list of medicine, a list of scriptures that when you get a symptom, when you're battling, you pull that sucker out and you begin to declare the scripture after scripture, the healing scripture after healing scripture. You've already got that in place. If I said, pull out your healing Scriptures, how many of you could say, I got it? Just raise your hand, would you? I got it. Raise your hand high, would you? All right. This will be for most of us. If you have a piece of paper and a pen, this morning I want to give you a number of scriptures, and there are a pile more. This is a list I encourage you to keep on putting together as you are in the Word, as God opens up a scripture to you and go, wow, there's a healing scripture. I'm going to put that in my medicine bottle. Let's look at the first ones they talked about. Would you, Proverbs chapter 4. They're going to be on the screen. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 22. Listen what it says. My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and medicine to a man's whole body. They are life to those who find them and medicine to a man's whole body. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 22. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 53. 
Some of you know this off by heart. Isaiah 53, beginning at verse 4. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. Who's it talking about? Jesus. He was pierced for our transgression. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. By his wounds, we are healed. And let me say it again. It was not the wound of a Roman whip. It was not the, room, the wound of a Roman punch in his face. It was not the wound of a crown on his head. It was the wounds he received from Almighty God. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. By his wounds, we are healed. Would you write down Matthew chapter 8? Beginning at verse 14. Matthew 8. When Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her and she got up and she began to wait on him. When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him and he drove out the spirits with a word. And he healed all, how many? Healed all the sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and he carried our diseases. 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, 24. I'm helping you with your list, by the way. Those of you writing it down, this is a powerful prescription list when you are battling for healing. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 says this, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Past tense or present tense? By his wounds, you have been already done. Would you write down Exodus chapter 15, verse 26? Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. There the Lord made a decree and a law for them, and there he tested them. He said, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all of his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians. Why? For I am the Lord who heals you. I am the Lord who who heals you. Would you turn to Psalms 103? Some of you again know this off by heart. Psalm 103, beginning at verse 1, it says this, Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being, praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Number one, who forgives all of our sin, number two, and heals all your diseases. Who forgives your sin, heals all your diseases. Would you write down Psalm 107? Psalm 107, beginning at verse 17. Some became fools through their rebellious ways and suffered affliction because of their iniquities. They loathed all the food and drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them. He sent forth his word and he healed them. Would you write down Acts chapter 10? 
Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Starting a little bit up, then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. You know the message that God sent to the people of Israel, telling the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. And how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil. Why? Because God was with him. How many did he heal? All. Would you write down 1 John chapter 3? 1 John chapter 3. Verse 8. Beginning verse 7, dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. He who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. Listen, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of of the devil. Can I ask you to make one confession? Is sickness a work of the devil? Yes. Dana, I'm going to ask you, are you able to, able to come? Or Zach, are you? Either one of you? I want to have James throw up on the screen. I would like you to write down four things. Number one, number two, number three, number four. How do you make the word of God a medicine? How do you take it as medicine? Would you just write this down really quickly before we go into prayer? Number one, have a list of healing scriptures. I began by giving you some, but I want to tell you again, there are a plethora in the Bible. You continue to add to it as God is taking you through scripture and it speaks to you. You write it down and go, when I am battling, when I am battling against symptoms, I'm going to go to the word of God and I'm going to put it on my list because I'm going to use that as a prescription. Number two, after you have it written down, set your eyes on it. Set your eyes on the word. I will never forget when Kenneth Copeland made a statement. He says, I got symptoms. I was battling a head cold. He said, for three days, I was battling, battling. All of a sudden, the Lord said to me, Kenneth, set your eyes on the word. He went, oh, I've been teaching this for 50 years. And somehow I forgot. He grabbed his Bible. He put his eyes on the word. He began to confess. He said, in 10 minutes, it was gone. You make a list and you set your eyes on them. Number three, you confess them with your mouth. I encourage you not to battle silently. Faith is voice activated. Life and death is not in the power of the thought. It's in the power of the tongue. If you are not comfortable reading scripture out in private, how will you ever get comfortable using it as a weapon in public? I talked to someone this past week who was battling for health for their child. When their child was in bed, they sat beside their child and they began to declare. They took scripture, began reading scripture over their child out loud while their child was sleeping. Within a couple hours, all the symptoms lifted. Their kid was asleep, woke up totally healthy the next day. How many parents will do that? After you make a list, after you set your eyes on it, and after you confess it with your mouth, number four, you make a decision to believe it with your heart. God's word is medicine. I will tell you what you already know, that when the symptoms come, every power of hell, the world and your flesh is gonna pull you in this direction. And the majority of the body of Christ is camped 
and living in the pharmaceutical tent. You know that. God is calling you and I today to move in this direction. To believe and declare the word of God is the most powerful medicine on the planet. And can I say this to you? If we don't have this nailed down for us, what's going to happen when people of the world who have got a bad report, the doctor says, there is no hope, nothing can save you. They come running to the church and say, is there any hope? And we go, sorry, I can't even get it right in my own life. But you can have your funeral in our church. <sighs> Guys, we carry the medicine. We carry it. We carry it for our healing and we carry it for a world that is dying because they're in this and much of this is killing them. I will never forget when Dr. Joel Wallach made a statement. He said studies have been done in the United States in the medical field. He goes in the last 20 years, there is five cases where people have had symptoms and possibly could have died because of overdose of vitamins. And he says, those aren't even completely sure. He says, but every year in the United States of America, 1.5 million people die from the side effects of the medicine they've been described. Complete this statement. The enemy comes only to and destroy. Would you say it with me? God's word is medicine. Would you say that with me? God's word is medicine. Say it again. God's word is medicine. From the very beginning when we came, we sense the presence of God this morning. We sense the anointing for healing in this place. In worship, man, Dana, you made a statement and said you forgot it was Healing Sunday. It didn't look like you forgot it was Healing Sunday. Those songs were just building faith for healing. It was powerful. Let me tell you what God laid in my heart for today. This is what we're going to do for those of you who are today believing for a healing touch, whether it's emotional, whether it's physical. In a moment, I'm going to have you stand. And after you have stood, I'm going to invite those who are not standing, those who aren't standing and believing for healing. I'm going to have you stand and surround those people. Why? Because the word of God says, these are the signs that will accompany those who believe. Those who believe will lay hands on the sick and they will what? We're going to practice the word, believing the word. There are times when somebody is ill and they ask me to pray. All that I do is put my hand on them and I quote that scripture and say, your word says, those who believe will lay hands and they will recover. And guess what? In Africa, they heal a lot easier because they don't have our Western medical dependence and mentality. But I'll tell you, that's changing. God is stirring up people to begin believing and receiving. But today, God is wanting to use our hands to lay hands and for healing to come. Surrounding every person, I want to have at least one person with a Bible. And today, I would like three healing scriptures read over that person while the other people around are laying on hands. We're going to release the prescription of God's word for healing in our life today. I've shared this with you before and I want to just say it one more time really clearly. As a child of six years of age, I remember in our little church back home in Westlock, there was a pastor 
or a person who was traveling around and they were in the healing ministry. At the end of their message, I have no idea what they talked about. At the end of the message, they invited people to come. As a six-year-old, I watched my mom walk down the aisle, be healed in her hips and her legs. I watched it grow. I knew the issue she had. She went back to her seat healed. My dad, who had been kicked by a horse at six years of age, they almost amputated. His leg was an inch and a half shorter than the other one. My dad sat there and never came forward. I was six. I watched my mom be healed. I watched my dad live to 87 years of age with a leg one and a half inches shorter than the other. And later in life, I asked my dad, Dad, why didn't you walk down the aisle? Why didn't you go and have that man pray? You just saw mom be healed. Why didn't you do it? This was the morning that I watched a lady in our church who was going for surgery on Monday. I watched... And she used to do this all the time, walk in steps. She could not take it like normal. She would walk a step. We'd all be behind her. Us kids would make fun of her. She was the pokey old lady that couldn't walk. She went to the front. She got the entire end of the service. She ran down the stairs, ran up the... She was running the whole time. And I'm a six-year-old going, something's shaking here. I said, Dad, why didn't you come? He goes, I didn't believe I'd be healed. I went, okay. Every person has the option to remain in their seat and to continue living with what the enemy has put on. My dad did. Here's the crazy thing. I could have dragged him down the aisle as a six-year-old. Would he have been healed? No. He didn't believe. He loved the Lord. Led Sunday school. Did the open session worship. He had a great voice to sing. But that inch and a half manifested its entire life. you bow with me this morning? Jesus, when you were on earth, the disciples came to you at one time and they asked the question. Increase our faith. What do we have to do to have our faith increased? We want to live like you. We want to believe like you. We want to have fruit like you. Father, in this world today, you are stirring in the hearts and minds of your children all across this globe in the midst of all the darkness, in the midst of the onslaught of the enemy. You are are touching, you are speaking, you are raising up a generation who believe, a generation who no longer stand back and allow the enemy to take territory, but those who stand up and take back what the enemy has stole. God, you're calling us as a people to believe. To believe that your word is health to our bodies, health to our minds, medicine to our sickness and disease. That by your wounds, we've already been healed. Before we pray this morning in the name of Jesus, I bind up every pharmaceutical spirit I command you not only to be silent, I command you to release every person that you have held in bondage, believing more in you. I command you to release that person in Jesus' name.
Father, I ask you would take back that ground right now. Would you fill that place? Would you make it so there is no room for the enemy to come back again, even when he comes knocking, even when the temptation to turn and to enter that pharmaceutical tent? God, would you be the one that draws us to your word? And to have that word have full effect in our life. And I prophetically declare that we are not just healed for the glory of God. We are equipped to go into the world and be instruments of healing in the lives of others. For those of you this morning... Spirit of God has stirred up faith inside of you. You believe that by his wounds you have been healed. You've been battling with symptoms. You've been struggling. Some of you have had bad reports. Some of you, the temptation has been, I will have this for the rest of my life. You've been told that. But today, faith has stirred inside of you to go. Today, it can be different. Today, when others surround me and join their faith with mine, today with those believing who can lay hands on the sick and they recover, today as the word of God is medicine, is spoken over my life, I am going to believe and I am going to receive healing in my life. I want to invite you to stand right now. just asking the Lord what to do here. And I'll tell you what the Lord is saying to me. Do you know that just because we're believing for healing doesn't mean that our hands still do not have the power to bring healing? Right? Those of you seated, just remain seated. Those of you standing, I would like you to get into a group of three. If you're standing with your spouse, find a different group. I don't want spouses in the same group. I want groups of three. Those of you standing, just make a group right now of three, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do. When you're in that place, I'm going to be the one to read the prescription healing over you today. Find a group, three, four. I want you to make a circle and I want you to lay hands on one another. I'm gonna begin by releasing the word of Mark 16. The words are in red. Go therefore into all the world. Preach the good news to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well.
If you believe that, would you just say, I believe. My hands are anointed for healing in Jesus' name. I want you to remain standing and I'm going to read some prescription over you. The word of God. My son, pay attention to what I say and listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For my words are life to those who find them and medicine to a man's whole body. I declare the word of God is medicine to your body today in Jesus' name. I declare the word of God in Psalm 103 over you. Praise the Lord, O my soul. And all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all our sin and heals all my diseases. I release that word in Jesus' name. All your diseases are healed. I declare the word of God in Isaiah 53. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. Would you say it with me? And by his wounds, we are healed. Hallelujah. Psalm 107. I release the prescription of the Lord over you today. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them. Today, we send out the word of God. We release the medicine of God in this place and that medicine is God's healing in your body We declare you healed in Jesus' name. The Bible says they brought the sick to Jesus. And he spoke a word. And he laid a hand. And he healed them all. Release the word over God, you, over, of God over you today. You are in the all. In the name of Jesus. He healed them all. Would you say, I believe it. And I receive it. And I say, thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Would you declare with me. By his wounds, I am healed. By his wounds, I am healed. Would you look at one another in your group and would you tell them the word of God? Tell them the truth of their circumstance according to the word of God? And would you give each other a hug this morning? Give them a hug this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Anybody believe the word of God is healing? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Would you please be seated for a moment, Sharon? As we're worshiping this morning, the Lord gave a picture and a word to Sharon. I just said, leave it with me. And the Lord said, call at the end of the healing time. I want that word released in this place. Sharon. Um, as we were worshiping, I just got an impression of the devil standing in front of the courtroom of the Lord and the Lord was sitting in there in front. I didn't see the Lord. And the devil was bragging how much he has defeated the Christians. And the Christians were really struggling to get victory over certain areas of their lives, whether it be healing in your body, your health, um, your mental healing, financial healing, um, families, or whatever. And he's just bragging and the Lord just took that gavel and just hit it and he said it's done he says i'm raising up a new army of christians to stand and step forward and take back the ground that satan has um, stolen from us and i just sensed so strongly i was actually shaking because the presence of the lord was so strong in front here that as we step forward in faith, we're going to start taking back ground as never before. That, that what Satan has held us back with and just kept us tied down, those bondages are going to just loose and we're going to walk forth right. in faith. We're going to take ground and we're going to declare the word of God and just proclaim God's word and revival and healing will occur. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The first two grounds we take is the ground of our mind and the ground of our body. That is the territory that needs the freedom first. And we're doing it. Would you stand with me this morning? Receive the blessing of the Lord. I declare to you today with the spoken word. The Lord bless you today and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine on you and to be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you today and fill you with his peace. And a revelation of the health that he has purchased for you on the cross of Calvary. I declare that in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and everybody receiving the blessing said, Amen. God bless you, church. Have an awesome week.